The history of the future isn't necessarily the past, nor is tomorrow the future when viewed through the lens of today. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. In 1933, the Chicago World Fair was themed around the idea of a century of progress, which looks speculatively into the future. New ideas, technologies, and tools were put to use in creative ways to showcase what type of life people all around the world could expect over the following century. One of the most important aspects of the fair was the Homes of Tomorrow exhibit, in which architects and designers speculated about and showcased their visions for the lifestyles of the future, attempting to predict how televisions, phones, and automobiles would reshape the functional aspects of our homes. Of the various display homes, the one that stuck out the most, dazzling crowds with its bold and experimental integrity, was the House of Tomorrow, designed by architect George Kack. The three-story, 12-sided structure was designed to accommodate a purely theoretical lifestyle for people living far beyond its time. It was constructed from aluminum and vermiculite with plate glass walls which introduced the concept of solar heating and a rudimentary cooling system. The house even included novel concepts such as a carport for personal automobiles and an airplane hangar, assuming people might prefer to fly around town in a biplane if in a hurry. The mostly wedge-shaped rooms were arranged around a central spiral staircase, a concept for the future which relied on the past, being based on the layouts of the Victorian era's utopian octagon houses. Entering the home from the street, you would pass through the screened-in front porch to arrive in the central stair hall. The simplistic styling of a floating handrail to follow the steps and a neat grid of mosaic tile resting below unadorned structural post could not have been further from the popular and traditional design trends of the time. This flowed into an open concept kitchen equipped with state-of-the-art appliances and styled with clean, geometric lines and abstract wallpaper. Instead of having a formal, separated dining room, the dining area became an extension of the kitchen, something which had only been seen in the smallest and cheapest houses but was now being pitched as a luxury. At a time when the family was expected to sleep on the same floor of the house, the owner's suite was situated on the first floor, away from the kids' rooms. Going upstairs, we will circulate around the house's central support to arrive at the second floor stair landing. This opens out into the living room, which fans from the stair hall, with the ceiling's beams radiating from the center in wedge-shaped sections. To one side, a freestanding fire pit helps to break up the large room, by creating a space for socializing within the greater space which was devoted to watching television. Whether the architect intended for people in the future to have two separate kitchens, or if he just wanted to show off his cutting-edge design skills, a secondary and smaller pocket kitchen could be found next to the second floor's living room. Continuing up the stairs to the third floor, we will find the sunroom, reminiscent once again of Crow's Nest found in the Victorian era's octagon houses. Up here, you could gain a full 360-degree view of your surroundings. When the fair was over, the house along with several other exhibits from the fair were placed on a barge and shipped to Beverly Shores, Indiana, and positioned with views overlooking Lake Michigan. The House of Tomorrow was briefly lived in, but the owner did not have a need for the airplane hangar and converted that area into a first-floor living room. As time went on, the House of Tomorrow began looking like the House of Yesterday, as much-needed maintenance was ignored and it began to fall into disrepair. Eventually, the architect's vision for the future was forgotten, and time eroded the interiors beyond recognition until nothing was salvageable. Since 1997, there has been an ongoing effort to preserve and restore the house, and more recently, the private organization known as Indiana Landmarks, which owns the home, is offering to return it to a private residence once again, with a catch. If a person is able to finance the projected two and a half to three million dollars expected for restorations, the organization will grant a 50-year lease to that person for them to call the House of Tomorrow their own House of Today. If money were not an issue, is this a project you feel you could tackle? Let me know down below in the comments section. And while you're there, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you never miss a fascinating episode of This House.